Hello, Juno EMR customers and users of the Oscar McMaster EMR system. Uh, my name is Jordan Visco, and today I'm going to uh, take a moment to introduce you to the new and improved eForm generator that we've integrated into Oscar McMaster uh, version 15 uh, for Juno EMR customers. Um, first, let's say that uh, forms are super important to us and our clients. Uh, they make an EMR so much easier to use. Uh, with an electronic medical record system, simply just storing patient data isn't enough. Uh, an EMR has to add more value than that. And adding customizable forms that can be pre-filled, automatically faxed, and signed um, can save a lot of time and redundant work, and is a huge benefit to EMR users. Um, uh, let's start off here by saying that uh, the eForm generator that we've built is not the only one that exists, and it's definitely not the first one that's ever been made for Oscar. Um, if you go to the oscarcanada.org website, which I'll show you here, um, you can click on the eForms link on the right-hand side and get to the eForms page. And if you scroll halfway down the page, um, there's a do-it-yourself link, and you can download an eForm generator here that's been used by the Oscar community for uh, a very long time. Um, it's built by originally by Shelter Lee, and uh, I just wanted to say um, thank you and recognize his um, uh, contributions to the Oscar project because there would be no way for us to have generated our version of the form generator without having first something to uh, use and uh, have as an original kind of benchmark for the, the program. So um, that said, we created our eForm generator because we wanted one that could edit eForms a bit easier uh, the second time around, uh, move fields around a bit easier if they're not placed properly the first time, align boxes, uh, in a row a bit easier and just uh, have multi-page functionality a bit easier. Just our goal is to make it so that all users can make and share eForms a bit easier without having uh, so much um, knowledge of HTML or how to edit the code. Uh, but that said, if you if you want to use the eForm generator uh, that's been used by the Oscar community for many years, you can go to the oscarcanada.org website. Um, uh, the Oscar eForm generator that we have is integrated again into the Oscar 15. Um, some of our users have not yet been upgraded to Oscar 15. We're working on doing that for everyone over the next couple of months. Um, that said, if you see the eForm generator here today and you want to use it, you can. Uh, you just have to go into one of our demonstration instances and use it there, and then download the eForm and import it into your Oscar. Uh, I'm using one called BC Demo 15 for uh, this demonstration here, and you can access this one actually if you go to the junoemr.com website, um, go to the slash support folder, uh, or click on help and how to's off the home page. Scroll uh, nearly to the bottom and you'll find the demonstration section and um, the information on how to log into this demonstration instance that has the new eForm generator um, is right here. And you can just log in at this link with demo, demo1234, and 1234 is the second level passcode. So anyone can use it. Um, whether you're a customer of Juno EMR or not, or whether you're on Oscar 15 or not, the only benefits of being an Oscar, uh, a Juno EMR user that is on Oscar 15 are that it's already integrated right into your Oscar instance. Um, and again, that will be happening for everybody over the next couple of months. Um, and I guess the last thing I want to say about uh, it before we get started is that it is open source. Um, the eForm generator is built right into the Oscar. Uh, McMaster code. So if anyone would like a copy of our Oscar McMaster code and uh, would like to take the eForm generator and integrate that into their own Oscar instance, um, just uh, shoot us an email support at oscarhost.ca and we'll make that happen for you. All right, without further ado, uh, we're going to go into Oscar here and we're going to start playing around with this new eForm generator. So I'm going to go to the administration interface here and I'm going to go to the forms and eForms section and I'm going to go to manage eForms. And here you can see you have a list of all the eForms in your Oscar. You can click to view them, you can edit them, download them, delete them. Um, you can upload new forms um, and on this top bar here there's a create eForm link and if you click it it's a drop down and you can see that you can either create eForms in an HTML editor or you can generate eForms with a new generator. So we're going to click that guy. 
and it pulls open the new eForm generator. I'm going to zoom out just slightly. There we go. So the first thing to note about the eForm generator, uh, right off the bat there, is that you can load an existing eForm. And if I want it, I'll show you this in a bit. We're going to create a form, get halfway through, and then we're going to come back and edit it. But you can just select the eForm that you want to edit here and click Load, uh, which is a great feature. Um, but we're going to start from scratch and we're going to go on the page setup and just set up a new one. Uh, you can choose whether you want a portrait, landscape, uh, or custom sized eForm. Um, most of the ones we do are portraits, so we're just going to leave it at a regular 8.5 by 11. Then you're going to add your pages. Um, these images uh, for these pages need to, need to be pre-uploaded into Oscar. So you would do that in, again, the administration interface under Forms, Upload Image. Um, so once you get your scanned in or electronic copies of a form uploaded here, uh, you can then choose them in your eForm generator here under this Pages tab. So I'm just going to add this one right there. And you can see I have a, a new scanned in form ready to be edited, or ready to be uh, built in Oscar. So now if it was a multi-page form and I wanted to have another page, I can just click Add Page. And I can choose another page, like this one, for instance. And then if I scroll down a bit here, voila, there's the second page of my eForm. So it's really simple to add uh, pages. And if you made a mistake and you want to remove one, you can just click the little negative sign. And it asks you if you're sure you want to do that. And you can click Delete. And there we go. We're back to a one-page form. So now that we have our eForm set up like we want, we can head down to the Form Building section. And this is where the meat of the eForm generator exists. Um, you can add checkboxes, text boxes. We've added a few extra things here for adding labels, shapes, and images that we don't use too often, but they're there. And also uh, adding signature boxes here. Uh, well, we're just going to start with a checkbox because that's what um, is required on our form. <clears throat> so now there's two different types of checkboxes. There's checkboxes and Xboxes. We always recommend the Xboxes. Uh, because they're a little bit easier to see, uh, especially when forms are faxed and so on. Um, and you can see the, the available elements to add to the page are here outlined in blue. Uh, to tell which one is which, you can just click this little pre-checked button, and you can see the one on the right is the X, Xbox. So I'm going to grab that guy, and I'm going to move it over onto my form like that. And try and put it in the right spot. Good. Oh, and if I didn't get it in the right spot, I can just move it around. Uh, or I can move it over here and put it in this one. So it's really easy to, to move forms around even after, or fields around, even after they've already been placed. Now, if I want another one, I can move it around like that. Now, it's not in the right place. And let's say I'm a bit OCD. I want to make sure everything is exactly in the right spot. I can actually drag this red line down from the top and put it where I think everything should be aligned. And then my fields will now snap to that line. So take this one and snap it to the red line there. Perfect. And then take this one, move it away, and then snap it back to that line. And you can see in that way, uh, my fields can be exactly vertically, or sorry, horizontally aligned. If I wanted to vertically align some fields, you can see at the bottom of my page here, I have some checkboxes. Um, and if I want those vertically aligned, I can use the the vertical uh, aligning bar there, and I can again drag some of these over, and they'll snap to that line, which is super useful for getting everything um, exactly where you want it to be. Um, you can also change the size of check boxes if you wanted. You can make them bigger or smaller. You can choose to pre-check them, and you can also choose to uh, pre-check them by gender. So checked if male, checked if female. All right, so now after we get some checkboxes on our page, and again, I'm not going to go through every field on the page. Uh, we're just going to go through some of the main ones here. Um, so we're going to move on to some text boxes. So this is the standard width and height for a check text box uh, that we have. Uh, you can see you can input single line or multi-line inputs here. And again, you just drag anything that's in a blue uh, outline, and you drag it onto the page. And again, I'm using this left line if I feel like it, so I can align everything with that left red line. Now, you can see my, my box here doesn't actually make it to the end of this box. So if I want to 
resize this box, I can hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and I can drag it wider just like that until I'm happy with how wide it is. Um, the information on how to resize these boxes is actually down here in this control section. So it says hold Alt to draggable resize. You can actually hold Alt and then use the shift key if you want to maintain the aspect ratio of your box as you drag it. Um, and you can also use control C, control V to copy and paste um, different fields. So if this one, for instance, if I wanted to copy it, I just select it with my uh, mouse, then I press control C and it's going to copy it and outline it in green to let me know that it's copied. And then I'm going to press control V and it's going to paste the exact same box right down there. Now, if I didn't like that one and I wanted to remove it, I can just grab it and I can just move it over to the trash and it's gone now. So this particular one right here is asking for the name of the primary care provider. So if I want to put uh, the name of the primary care provider from Oscar, I can use a database tag to prefill it. So I can select here and choose doctor right there. So now this one is going to be prefilled with doctor. I can put it there and again if I want I can hold down alt and resize it like that. And uh, you can choose any database tag that exists in Oscar uh, through the uh, interface here. All right, now if I wanted to add a field and not have a database tag, uh, prefill some content, but I just want to prefill it with some text, I can just enter the text there and drag that field onto the page. And you can see the prefilled text shows in, in dark black. But if I wanted to have some placeholder text, uh, which is going to be more like instructions for how to fill out the field, like, um, you know, full address only, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Um, I can enter that as placeholder text, drag that one on, and you can see it shows, the text shows in light gray. And that's going to just, as soon as I put my cursor in there as a user, that's going to um, disappear, and I'm going to be able to write in there whatever I want. So that's how that field works. Um, if you wanted to do a multi-line input, you could choose this box as well and drag it in here. And then again, if I want to resize it, hold down Alt, grab a corner instead of a side. Oh, grab a corner, there we go. And drag it to the right size for my box, just like that. All right, so now once I get the form uh, how I want, I can uh, go down to the finalization and I can uh, finish it off. If I wanted to stylize some of the elements of the page, I could do that here. Uh, that's for another video, but for today, I'm just going to finalize this one. I'm going to give it a name, so I'm going to call it Jordan 2, and I'm going to uh, click this button that, or I'm going to leave this checked where it says include fax controls. That way, if I have the eForm faxing capabilities or eFax capabilities in my Oscar instance, I can use uh, this form for faxing and I can fax it directly to whoever I'd like. So I'm going to leave that checked and I'm going to click Save as New Form and voila, the form is now saved. So if I want to find it, I can close this screen, go back to my Oscar, go to the administration again, go to Forms, go to Manage eForms, and I can see my form right here and I can click on it to view it. And uh, you can see the fax integration has already been integrated there. And I can go to create eForm, eForm generator. And now I can go to load existing eForm and I can select the form that I want to load, which is called Jordan 2. And I can click load selected form and I can keep working on this form if I wasn't done it previously. So let's say that, um, you know, I didn't like this field or I had done something wrong with this field, I can now drag it over into the trash, just like that. And uh, when I'm done uh, adding new fields, I can then again go to the finalize section and click update, and it's going to update the form, just like that. So there's a lot of really cool features uh, in this new eForm generator, and um, uh, we hope you uh, get a lot of use out of it. Um, there's a bunch of features we still want to add to it in the future that we were going to be adding, uh, features like 
adding multiple different types of date formats, um, multi-site features, uh, signature stamping, um, a way to reorder the, the tabbing order, things like that. But um, we feel like this is a great start and a huge improvement uh, for Oscar. And uh, if you have any questions or need any information on how to use the new eForm generator, uh, please let us know. Thanks a lot.